It is time for round seven of the I-94 rivalry at MCCU Field. And this could possibly be the biggest series between these two foes all season long. It is the 15 and 26 Battle Creek Battle Jacks taking on the visiting 25 and 15 Kalamazoo Growlers. Good evening and welcome to Battle Creek. My name is Cedric Granger and I'm revved up for this in-state rivalry matchup. Each of these squads are coming into this game with a series win. Wine kick deal. That one is lined over towards the left side, and that ball is down for a base hit. Coltrane Rugner walking his way home and paint the night. Blue and white, Battle Jacks walk it off. Jay Adams is your hero for the day. Here's the one, two. On the ground to the right side, takes a hop, Holt runs, throw to first, covered by Clack, it's dropped! The ball is dropped! And the Battle Jacks get another run across, a couple mistakes from Walsall, unbelievable defensive breakdown. And the Battle Jacks have tied up the game. He said, my dad's career definitely pushes and inspires me, as he's gonna hammer that ball deep over to left field. That ball is long gone, hasta la vista for Kyle Ratliff. The 0 2. Little blooper over towards left field. Ching! Full extension! The 0 2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Big pitch there from Anthony Aloisio. Go through thick for Ben. That one's put down the middle. Thompson with a nice glove. Throws it down to second for one. Down to first. And that's two. So watch out for Dylan Carey to potentially aim for a stolen base. And he goes on the first pitch. Pitches a ball. Throw it down to second base. Offline. That's into the outfield. And Andrew Manelli scores. Down in the count. Junior from Germantown, Tennessee. Earned a scholarship to play at Ole Miss. In 2023, he made 14 starts. Played in 32 games total. Showcasing how he was a guy that the Rebels like to substitute in a lot. Getting some solid work. With a great summer here, may have a chance to start. Same way for Tyler McKinstry, a player that was already coming in acclimated a little bit. That one sent over to the right side, and there's a bloop single. Regan Burford with his first hit of the day and the second for Kenosha. Burford had game two off of the doubleheader. And it'll come with a nice hit over towards shallow right field whenever you could Get it high enough just to get over the infield, but not far enough so that you can drop it in front of the outfielders. It's always a good piece of hitting. Here's Tucker Zadunik. He'll put that one on a rope, and that's a fair ball. Radliff still chasing that one. And Burford's getting the wave home. He'll make it to home plate, and he scores. A sliding triple for Tucker Zadunik, and the Kingfish have a 3-2 to two lead. You can hug those lines. That is a recipe for extra bases. And that was in a tough spot. Ratliff had to sprint for that one. That was all the way back near the tarp. Extra bases all day for Tucker Zadunik. And he makes it in the third, driving in Burford. Explosive play from Kenosha. Maybe some discussion here. Could be potential interference of some sort. But I'm only speculating. All the umpires in the Northwoods League training to be in Major League Baseball. When Tyler Bright, a member of the Battle Jacks media crew, runs camera, and I went down to talk with JT Scary, talking about how in this league it's development on all levels, whether you're a player or a coach. You love to see guys working their way up. You just saw Chris Clark talking with one of the umpires. Started off as an assistant coach for the Battle Jacks last year and is now the field manager. So the play will stand. It's an RBI triple for Tucker Zadunik, setting things up well for Blaine Schmidt. Schmidt kind of trying to keep the hits going. Trying to make it three in a row. <laughs> Burford singled and Zadunik tripled to drive him home. Come on with those baby swings, 32. 
Strike two to Schmidt. Stands at six feet tall, 190 pounds. Freshman out of Cincinnati, Ohio, attending Archbishop Moeller. Really great school for baseball down there in the Cincinnati area. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Fourth strike out of the day for Tyler McKinstry. Player that's coming off of his best start of the season against the Kokomo Jack Rabbits on July 8th, where he struck out a season high four. He's already matched that here in just three and two thirds innings of work. Take a look at this one. His off speed play is something that Chris Clark loves about him, and he's been able to pick up some strikeouts with breaking balls today. Takes us back to the top of the order with Dom Listy. Got a runner 90 feet away, the 1 0 pitch. Put on the ground towards the right side. High hopper, Adams adjusts and is in time to strand a runner in scoring position. But the Kenosha Kingfish, they take the lead again. Tucker Sadunik with an exhilarating triple, driving in Reckon Burford right into the home half of the fourth. You're watching the Northwoods League Baseball Network. That's what Battle Creek is building here in the Serial City. Had the rebrand recently, going from the Battle Creek Bombers to the Battle Creek Battle Jacks, switching in ownership too to Brian Colopi. Right now, this team really starting to grow its roots within the community. Over a thousand strong here tonight. People of all ages. How you doing? Nice little thumbs up. Great night for baseball. Allgaier will look to ignite the crowd. Something that the Battle Jacks did a lot of last night. Allgaier reached on a fielder's choice last time he was up. It takes strike one. When it comes to the fans, Allgaier said the fans mean everything. They come out to every game, and the energy that they bring us is electric. And it really helps us to play at our best. So the Battle Jacks having a big weekend homestand like this. It always gets the players a little bit of that extra juice. A lot of these guys usually playing on weekday games where you don't have as many people at their respective colleges. I talked. That one sent the left field. Whoa, what a catch from Cole Gober. Holy moly, did he just open his own airline? Because he went flying right there. The third base play has been terrific from Kenosha all weekend long. We saw it yesterday when Mason Morris was making play after play. Now this time, Cole Gober says, look what I can do. Sets things up for Kyle Ratliff. Ratliff puts that one on the ground. Another play to Gober on the hot corner. Long throw, and wow, what a stretch. Regan Burford got up there, but still having a little toe drag swag on the bag. Two up, two down. Couple of dandies from each side of the infield. A lot of these players, 10 smaller schools, so you're only getting crowds maybe about 50 to 300 or 400. So when they join the Northwoods League, you see a weekend crowd where you're getting a thousand, couple thousands of fans. Gets the adrenaline going. I talked with Cameron Haviland about this before. He said, yeah, I'm usually used to pitching in front of 50, now I'm pitching in front of 2K. Four runs, doesn't matter. Eight run deficit. Doesn't matter. The Battle Jacks, they once again come back for the second time along this road stretch. And I'm joined by field manager Chris Clark. Chris, first time over here at Wisconsin Rapids. And oh my gosh, you guys made it memorable. Another comeback victory. Last time you said it was a speech that really got everybody going. What was it this time that really got the Battle Jacks going again? Yeah, I think it was just knowing that we were, we're, we were capable. So when the, when the game got to be 4-0 four, four there, we were just trying to stay. That guy that started tonight was a good arm too. So. Um, I think it was just a, you know, an all-around offensive buy-in to what we were able to accomplish early in the week, you know, knowing that uh, we weren't really out of it. 
um, trying to put good swings on good pitches, just kind of make sure we're playing all 27 and uh, came out on the right side of it tonight. So. Gotcha. And do you guys remember any of that time at Walsall? Did that kind of help out in saying, like, oh, hey, we've come back from eight runs down, so getting to come back from four runs down, we could do that too? Yeah, I think so. I think that played a big part of it. Like I said, going through it, you know, it wasn't that long ago that uh, that game happened. So I think for the hitters, you know, I don't ever think they, they really panicked or anything like that. Like I said, we were putting good swings on pitches off their starter tonight, um, just weren't falling. So once the fifth came and we were finally Blake uh, Solomon was able to kind of break it open and get us on the board there, I think everybody kind of relaxed a little bit. Um, bought into it, and like I said, the results kind of followed. So, very proud of the, the, the effort all around from the offense and the pitching tonight. Yeah, and then again, in extra innings, this is another time that you guys have gone to an extra inning game, the second time in the second half of the season, and you guys have been able to excel in these late game moments. What's been the factor for doing that? Yeah, I mean, the moment not being too big for the guys that are in the box around the field, I think, has, has a lot to do with it.